Even though technology has allowed us to go to space several times, even today, space travel is incredibly difficult for humans. When we think of space, we think of astronauts shaking hands with aliens, traveling to far off galaxies, and building on new worlds every time. That's at least what the movies have made viral, but it couldn't be further from the truth. First of all, space is huge. Our closest neighbor, Alpha Centauri A, is 4.367 light years from us. Even if we were traveling at the speed of light, it would take us four full years just to reach the star. That's way too much travel and a lot of resources wasted on getting there. If we could travel to the speed of light, we could have a big advantage despite the gargantuan distance between stars and planets, though it would still be a big challenge for most people. A popular idea is that of traveling using wormholes, which are essentially tunnels in space and time that let you get from one part of space to another in an incredibly short amount of time. However, even traveling short distances in space is a huge task. Keeping people alive in space is another thing. How will people survive for four years inside a ship without enough resources to keep them afloat? You need to have enough water, food, and air, and make sure that all of those resources are properly recycled and that the toilets aren't malfunctioning either. However, the human body wasn't made for space, and for astronauts, there are many threats, namely bone density plummeting, cardiovascular problems, muscles wasting away, and even getting cancer. If you've ever been on a long car trip, you'll know that spending so long in a cramped up space can be very annoying for you. Imagine spending a year or even four in a small spacecraft with only five of your friends, without the possibility of seeing your other friends and family. For anyone, that'd be incredibly harsh on their mental health, which isn't usually analyzed as part of the problem. It's pretty hard and bleak in terms of getting people to other planets and stars, and with all the reasons we've mentioned, one would think mankind would give up on this pursuit a long time ago. The truth is, they haven't. Star Trek and Star Wars make things look super easy, and when the heroes get a distant distress call, all they do is use a warp drive or hyperdrive and they'll arrive at their destination. Just traveling to Mars would take a full year of space travel. It's ironic that space travel has taken so much to become big. Almost 50 years ago, humans were walking on the moon, but we stopped going in 1972 and never ventured any further, except by sending robotic probes. Humans have never gone to Jupiter, as the book and the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey promised us, or even to Mars. And the truth is that space is hard. Every time a spaceflight failure occurs, the phrase space is hard will be uttered constantly. The sentiment is typically being expressed as disappointment. Any high stakes project carries a high risk of failure, especially if it's on the cutting edge of technology. Spaceflight also has a bunch of problems that make the conditions for success super difficult. These are some reasons why this happens. Rocket launches are controlled explosions in the most literal sense. Given that combustive power of liquid oxygen and hydrogen, alcohols and kerosenes, and leaves little room for error. Using that energy into a usable thruster requires carefully designed combustion chambers, nozzles, and other components. Hydrodynamic instabilities are so complex and difficult to predict that the early rocketeers relied on experimentation rather than empirical modeling to perfect their designs. And that's not even talking about the many hazards of human spaceflight. Let's think of a human journey to Mars, for example. Even though Mars has been numerously probed by human satellites and machines, a journey there offers a massive amount of complexities. The first hazard of a human mission to Mars is also the most difficult to visualize because, well, space radiation is invisible to the human eye. Above Earth's natural protection, radiation exposure increases cancer risk, damages the central nervous system, can alter cognitive function, reduce motor function, and prompt behavioral changes. To learn what can happen above low Earth orbit, NASA studies how radiation affects biological samples using a ground-based research laboratory. The space station sits just within Earth's protective magnetic field, so while our astronauts are exposed to 10 times higher radiation than on Earth, it's still a smaller dose than what deep space has in store. To mitigate this hazard, deep space vehicles will have significant protective shielding, dosiometry, and alerts. Research is also being conducted in the field of medical countermeasures such as pharmaceuticals to help defend against radiation. Rocket engines have the problem of causing intense vibrations during their launch, which both rockets and their payloads must survive. 
Space-bound components and systems need to be tested several times on Earth to ensure that they can withstand the launch environment in the first place. There's also the cleanliness standards and levels to be upheld for the spacecraft. If you've watched our video on space junk, then you'll know that we don't want to make space dirtier than it already is right now. During assembly on Earth, dust, fluids, and other contaminants will settle to the bottom of a spacecraft or collect in spots with little airflow. In zero gravity, these particles can become airborne, so to speak, and damage electrical components, shorting them out. This is why spacecraft are assembled in clean rooms. It's to protect the spacecraft from humans, not the other way around. Let's also remember that a spacecraft is not only a home, it's also a machine. The ecosystem inside the spacecraft is important in the everyday life of its inhabitants, the astronauts. Important habitability factors include temperature, pressure, lighting, noise, and quantity of space. It's essential that astronauts are getting the requisite food, sleep, and exercise needed to stay healthy and happy. Technology, as often as the case with out-of-this-world exploration, comes to the rescue in creating a habitable home in a harsh environment. Everything is monitored, from air quality to possible microbial inhabitants. Microorganisms that naturally live on your body are transferred more easily from one person to another in a closed environment. Imagine an outbreak like COVID-19 happening inside of a spacecraft going to another planet. How would the astronauts fare in a situation like that where they're already isolated? And that's something that could happen to anybody in space, which is why it's so problematic. There's also the fact that the reliability of a rocket or any kind of spacecraft has to be essentially perfect for things to work. Unlike most projects on Earth, where engineering mistakes can be fixed as they arise, a space system has to operate correctly the first time since repairs are impossible after launch. The reliability or dependability under stated conditions for a set period of time of a space system must be quantified and well understood before it even gets to the launch pad. On top of that, an aircraft and a spacecraft or rocket are very different in their automated sequencing and the steps necessary to properly operate them. Space operations are infinitely more complex than air operations. And there's also the fact that not even all of the things we mentioned are all the reasons why space travel is hard. The truth is that the more we know about space, the more we understand how little we know about traveling in it and how it would affect humans. What we know is only what we've learned in less than 100 years of space travel. And while many people are committed to turning space travel and possibly future colonization into something big, for the time being, it will be a nightmare. But our species is characterized by our ability to make last year's miracle seem like this year's child's play. Just over 50 years ago, color televisions were a novelty. Now we're working on fully immersive virtual reality. We need a significant attitude shift in how we think of spaceflight. Rocket science is no longer fringe or experimental. It's marching into the mainstream, and it should be held to the same high standards as other pervasive technology systems. With due time, we'll be able to advance in spaceflight. And those are the main reasons why space travel will always be a nightmare. It's definitely not an easy thing to fathom, but someday we might even be able to travel faster than light and reach new planets easier.